Today, we begin another dashboard study, this time in Philemon. Although comprised of one so-called chapter with only 25 verses, Paul's epistle to Philemon and the church in thy house Philemon 1 to 2 is rich in insight, an instruction on believers dealing with believers in difficult situations potentially requiring a double dose of grace. Example, Believer Human Relation Instructions. Today, we will take a look at some background to this epistle with the first three verses as our springboard. We'll come back to these same verses, tomorrow. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy our brother, unto Philemon our dearly beloved, and fellow labor, and to our beloved Aphia, and Archippus our fellow soldier, and to the church in thy house, Philemon 1-1-2. Let's look at some insights and background information. This letter is the only source of information about the person, Philemon. He was a slaveholder who had been saved by grace, possibly resulting from Paul's ministry Philemon 1.19. At least, by this verse, we know Philemon was spiritually indebted to Paul in some way. Because the church met at his house and he owned slaves, Philemon by the standards of the day must have been a person of some wealth and potential influence. Although the letter contains personal matters, it is also addressed to the church Philemon 1-2, in this epistle, much discussion is often given to why the letter was also addressed to the church. Perhaps Paul wanted to make this a public matter to encourage other slaveholders to follow Philemon's pending example. Or perhaps to place Philemon in such position that would give greater likelihood that he might heed Paul's request. The backdrop of the whole story presented by this letter is, of course, the first-century Roman Empire. There were millions of slaves throughout the empire, with many slaveholders having ten slaves or more, and some having hundreds. These slaves were not of any particular race or nationality but were composed of the people of Rome's many conquered territories. Roman law governing slavery was quite severe toward the slave. They were considered nothing more than pieces of property to be bought, sold, and used for any purpose whatsoever. As a result, life was not easy for the slaves and many were frequently beaten or abused for even minor offenses, and even crucified for running away. This epistle is addressed primarily to Philemon, the owner of one Simus, but also to Aphia, who is believed to be Philemon's wife because of the letter's domestic subject matter, and finally to Archippus a minister of the Colossian church Colossians for 17, who is believed to be a relative of Philemon for the same reason, Perhaps his son, one Simus, of Coloss called one of you Colossians for 2-9, slave of Philemon, had fled from his master to Rome after having defrauded him Philemon 1-18. He was saved by grace under the ambassadorship of the Apostle Paul, and then encouraged by Paul to return to his master, furnished with this epistle. The epistle generally recommends him to Philemon's favorable reception as being now no longer a mere servant but a brother in Christ. Thus. This letter was brought to Philemon by one Simus saved by grace runaway slave belonging to Philemon along with Tychicus who was going to Colossae with one Simus Colossians for 2-7-9 as the bearer of another letter, commonly referred to as the Epistle to the Ephesians. Ephesians 6 to 1. In this epistle to Philemon, Paul applies what is true of all believers in Christ to the problem of slavery and, in the bigger picture, applies some very insightful words into human relations among believers worker and employer. Slave and owner, father in faith and son in faith and restored fellowship therein. Thus, this epistle encourages seeing relationships in light of the deep bonds created in Christ, rather than the earthly social structures of status or self-achievement or even legal rights. Believer, even though the epistle to Philemon is a small writing, the content is large, and it is part of the revelation of the mystery given Paul by the risen Lord. Never discount the small things of Scripture.